what's going on guys welcome to the channel today's goal we have a kind of a two-phase thing that we're doing today I have a couple of billet valve covers and that is actually a front engine plate a lot of you guys probably have seen like mid-engine plates before I've already polished the front side of this but what we're going to do the back side's already been prepped for polish so we're going to finish that and these valve covers are welded aluminum so we're going to polish those and while we're at it we're also going to do a little bit of a review and how to on using menzerna compounds and sick rigs liquid polish now, if you followed some of my older videos, like the Yeti Cup video, you'll notice that I'm not using the same compound or, or company that I used to use. And the reason for that, more than anything, a friend of mine turned me on to Menzerna Compounds, and that's kind of where it all started. Um, we were doing a job together, we split the job, and his work looked 10 times better than mine. And what I decided to do was try it out for myself. Uh, the company I used to use, love that company. They have a great product, but the reality of it is, uh, you know, if your work doesn't look as good as the guy next to you, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. So uh, we are now using the Menzerna compounds, as I mentioned. Uh, we're also using the Sick Rigs metal polish. I have found that to work out just a little bit better than the liquid polish I was using before. And we're also using the matchless buffs. Uh, the ones down here, these are all 12 by 5 buffs, and these are 10 by 3s up top. So we will kind of go over some of the benefits that I've found and why I feel like they're working a lot better for me than some of the things I've used in the past. And then we're actually gonna put them to work and I'll kind of give you like a step-by-step -step on how I am utilizing these to, you know, make aluminum stainless shiny. So now we're gonna go over what compounds we're gonna be using and in conjunction with what pads and some of the other uh, things you might want to know, especially if you're new to Menzerna uh, or just new to metal polishing in general. Um, first things first, we have our machines out. Uh, this is a Makita GA7021. It's a 6,000 RPM, 7 to 9 inch angle grinder. You can pick them up at Home Depot. Um, something that I do need to make very clear, this is a 3,500 RPM or I think it's 3200 RPM polisher from Makita. It's a 9237. One thing that we need to cover before we move on. If you're going to use this, being that 6000 RPMs, not one of these buffing wheels behind me or any company out there uh, makes a buffing wheel that is safely rated to run 6000 RPM. So, if you're going to run the big Makita machine and one of those buffs blows up in your face, guess what? It's not on me, it's not on the company that made it, it's on you. They're rated for right around 3000 RPM. So anytime you're above that, you're, you're kind of running your own risk. Now, with that said, these are white untreated buffs. They're very soft. Uh, they're made by Matchless. And these down here, are flannels which are even softer neither of those you should never go over about 2,000 rpms with either one of them glad that we got that out of the way uh, like I say uh, if you guys try to run faster than they are supposed to and they blow up it's not on me it's on you and it's not on the company that made them so anyway starting with the compound um, these are matchless airway buffs, and that's what they call them. They are directional. When you're mounting them to your machine, you definitely want to find the flap, which on this one, okay, so there's the flap. So this side would actually face down, uh, so that way you do not catch that flap open and you know the machine will practically vibrate out of your hands. 
notice that there's a difference in the size here. This is a 10 by three. This is a 12 by five. A lot of people, in fact, probably 90% of the polishers out there are using these 10 by threes. And don't get me wrong, they work great. I use them all the time, but I am, as of recent, gravitating more to the 12 by fives. The reason for that is because if I'm doing a bigger project like a uh, Peterbilt or uh, you know a big fuel tank or something like that, the 12 by five seems to save me a little bit of time. I have run them at 6,000 RPMs. Um, you know, again, full disclosure, uh, not rated for that, but uh, for what it's worth, none of them have blown up in my face. Knock on wood. So anyway, moving on. Here's your first bar. This is Minzerna 439T. That's the same thing, of course, I've just used it before. Um, these violet buffs are going to be the heaviest cut uh, out there aside from, let me find it here. This right here is actually a dip treated uh, orange. So that would be a little bit heavier than the violet. Uh, you can pick that guy up from Highway Shine. Uh, I believe that Andrew still has some of those. Then the, the next step down from your heaviest cutting wheel is gonna be your orange. Now normally I use these two in conjunction with each other, the 439T with the orange. Uh, the next bar, this is kind of like a in-between cutting and coloring. A lot of times I will either use the P14F in place of the 439T. Um, I kind of flop back and forth of yeah, but depending on what I'm working with. But the next step down from the orange, I am told, is the blue. Uh, the blue and the yellow, quite frankly, I have a hard time telling them apart. Like if you pick one up and you fold it, uh, to me, they, they feel almost equal, but uh, I am told that the, the yellow is supposed to be the softer of the two. I don't use a lot of yellow. Uh, in fact, generally speaking, that's my coloring combination. It's the blue with the 480. But either way, um, that is, those are your cutting these are going to be your coloring. Uh, the last bar that we have here, this is the P175 Super Finish. Uh, this is a phenomenal bar. I've never seen a, a finishing bar that does as good a job as this does, and it lasts forever. I mean, you hardly need any, and it just, it just keeps going. I mean, I bought this. That bar right there has done probably... I think like two Peterbilts and uh, a few sets of Alcoas and maybe a couple of sets of American Forces and you can see I've hardly used any of it. Um, now I have seen a lot of guys like on the metal polishing communities that have struggled between the cutting bars and the finishing bars. And the, the reason I think that is these right here 439T and P14F a little goes a long, long way. In fact, when I'm using these, uh, as soon as I'm ready to apply more compound, I'm just touching the wheel that quick, and, and that's all you need, and that's, that's why they last forever. The 480 BLF, on the other hand, this is a very dry compound. Those are much wetter, and for that reason, the 480 BLF, you, you have to load it into the pad longer, and the other thing I'm going to run by you, and this was kind of had something to do with 12 by 5 wheels that I buy. Uh, 480, for some reason, uh, I think it needs more heat than a 3500 RPM polisher and a 10 by 3 will produce. Because when I started using the 3500 RPM polisher with a 10 inch wheel, 
with the 480, I had a lot of problem, like I'd get these like little black spots and they wouldn't clear up and you know, I'd have to rake it and reapply like every five seconds and it just got old. As soon as I started using the 12 by fives, you have to remember if this is turning 3,500 RPMs, the edge speed, because it's bigger in diameter, is actually running faster on the surface than a 10 inch wheel will. So when I went to the 12 by five, especially for 480, all those problems went away. Now, back to our finishing 175. It is, we're gonna run that with white untreated wheels. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the um, flannel wheels. I just, for whatever reason, I feel like I'm putting more hash back in it uh, as opposed to using white untreated. So that's just a personal preference. For my sanding and for my finishing, I use a Milwaukee. This is model number 2738-20. Uh, awesome polisher. The only downfall to this is it only turns 2200 RPM. So it's great for finishing, great for sanding. A lot of times I will use a 8500 RPM sander, especially for bigger projects. Again, the Peterbilt tanks and stuff like that. But for the smaller stuff, I'm just gonna use the Milwaukee uh, in conjunction with a sanding pad uh, along with an interface pad. If you guys are kind of new to sanding, uh, interface pads to me, they're kind of like training wheels on a bicycle for sanding. You put an interface pad down on your backing plate and then you put your sandpaper on there and you're much less likely to gouge something so that's what we're going to be doing there so you guys that maybe you've never seen double stacked wheels before these are in finished flanges uh, that it right there is what you need to be able to do those. Uh, this is just a regular flange, so if we're only running one 10 by 3, uh, that's, that's what you uh, have going on there. Those are 12 by 5 flanges. Now, everything that you see here is going to be available from either Highway Shine, uh, in finish, which I believe that they don't sell the Minzerna compounds, uh, but you can buy the buffs there. And then the, um, if you're in Canada or you're out on the West Coast, Spectrum Alberta uh, is probably the way to go for you because they are uh, up there in Canada, kind of like right on the border and they might get things to you faster. I actually love their sandpaper. Um, I, I think it's probably the best paper I've ever used. And then lastly, I said that this stuff works a little bit better than the metal polish I was using before. It actually works a lot better. Uh, I will say this, that the Sick Rigs by Calvis aluminum polish uh, or metal polish that is liquid, what I noticed was, was if I was hand rubbing the tops of Peterbilt tanks uh, compared to what I was using before, I can't tell the difference almost between what I hand rubbed and what I did with the machine. Like it looks that good, it's, it's amazing stuff. So what I usually do is I'll put the, um, the fine metal polish on in between my primary cutting, coloring, I'm sorry, primary coloring and finishing. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if you're doing stainless, take 480 BLF and replace it with 126. And, and that's, that's your whole system. Now, Today, like I said, I tend to do things a little bit differently. And so what I'm gonna show you, again, this right here is basically the system under every normal circumstance. <coughs> uh, I will be more than likely using either P14F or 439T with orange for these um, valve covers. Now I am going to sand them 320 grit and 600 grit. I'm going to use 
whoops. I'm going to use 480 BLF. I'm not going to use yellow. And I'm going to use P175. So, again, depending, I guess for all intents and purposes, you could probably just say, depending on my mood, um, I'm going to be using either P14F or 439T with orange. Then I'm going to go to blue with 480 BLF. And then I'm going to finish double stacked white untreated. It's P175. 1800 RPM. These here are going to be 3500 or basically uh, wide open on the Makita 9237 polisher. And then this I will also be running at wide open or 3500 RPMs. So now that we've kind of covered everything as far as what we're going to be using and how the system works like i said i hope you guys that are trying the stuff uh, especially with the uh the coloring bars i know it was a struggle when i started just remember the cut bars you barely touch them to the pad um once the pad's broken in of course and then your your coloring bars you do have to load them in a little bit longer we're going to go ahead and get started now um just for you know today normally i'd be using like a full face respirator uh or at least a half face with safety glasses i'm going to be using milwaukee safety glasses and by the way if you guys haven't tried these out yet especially if you like safety glasses as opposed to a uh, full face these do not fall like i have got to give milwaukee credit for these safety glasses it blew my mind uh, the first day I used them, it was humid as could be, and uh, I'm halfway through what I'm working with, and I, I, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, wow, that's really clear. So I grabbed another pair of safety glasses I was using beforehand and put them on just to, like, make sure, you know, something wasn't playing a trick on me, and they fogged right up. So whatever they put on these things, they don't fog. It's awesome. Um, normally, again, I would be using a respirator for the sake of doing this just because it's a small project I, I, I'm going to use a, a facial buff uh, safety wise not really recommended uh, but you know there's no chance I would use this if I was doing a whole Peter build or a bunch of wheels or anything like that but since these pieces are relatively small uh, I think I can get away with it and um, you know again I don't necessarily recommend not using a, a full face respirator. So I'm gonna set you guys up. We're gonna get the valve cover sanded. Once we get the valve cover sanded out, uh, we're gonna start polishing this stuff. So stay tuned.
All right, guys, so I wanted to pause this just for a second. Um, this valve cover here has been sanded up through 600 grit. Again, that's all rotary. I think I spun the machine about 2,000 RPMs or so. Uh, this one's only been sanded to 320. Now, I wanted to show this to you because reality is, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but if I wanted to, I could probably cut that out a little bit more. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Okay. So yeah, now you can see it's it's definitely a little bit rougher. Um, either way, that's your 600. And again, not nearly as rough, but ultimately the deeper the sanding you go, or I should say the finer the sanding you go, uh, the, the easier it's going to be to cut everything out. I never have a problem at 600. Every once in a while I'll go to 800 just to make it a little bit easier. Um, but the reality of it is, is if you had enough time, you could probably buff 320 out. I'm sure that there's guys out there that do it. So I'm going to get the other one finished up off camera, and then we're actually going to start polishing these. All right, guys, we're all set up to polish. I got both of these um, sanded out to 600 grit. A uh, couple things. When we start, pay attention to how much compound I'm putting on. Um, okay, and that will basically give you an idea of, of where you need to be if you're, if you're overloading the buff or over lubricating it. Again, all you got to do is just touch it to the bar. And uh, also, to give you an idea, um, you know, you hear a lot of the guys that use Minzerna say a little goes a long way. Uh, you, hopefully, I'll do a good job of displaying that. Now, when I'm working on this piece, since it's a little bit more intricate than the average, I'm going to go around and basically edge everything first, meaning that, like, around those holes and all the corners, I want to make sure I'm coming onto my edge because if I were to go the other way and go off the edge, that would probably be bad news. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started.
All right, so this is what a first cut's gonna look like. Uh, I'm gonna try to capture it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. Okay, see all that? Like it looks really, really hashy. It, the first bar, uh, the first and second bar, P439T, which is what we just used in P14F, they're gonna leave behind a lot of this, um, it's almost like a residue of some sort. Um, you know, maybe that's whatever they're using in the lubrication. And like if I come, all right, I come over here and if I hit it just right, you're gonna see the same thing up top. There it is, okay, so yeah, you can see all of the like hashiness. Um, all that's gonna come out in the next steps. So if you're worried about that while you're doing this, don't, don't even, uh, it's gonna go away. So I still have the sides of this one to do and then I'm going to get out the 480 BLF and we're gonna start coloring. that we just got cut down with the Sick Rigs Fine Polish. Once we take care of that, we're gonna go on to the coloring phase. So I'll show you that real quick. guys normally when I move on to my coloring phase I'm usually not going to rub it down and clean off all of the liquid polish but the reason I did do it was just to give you an idea of how much clarity you can get just from a first cut using 439 um, you know obviously the LED light is going to show all flaws but you know that leave me a comment down below I'm curious to hear your thoughts do you think 
that that is good enough for a first cut or should I go even further with it but the clarity I mean like I say that's just our our first step and it already looks night and day compared to the sanded piece all right so now we're commencing stage two uh, like I said we're going to be using our blue wheel with 480 BLF and by the way I don't know if any of you guys do this see how I got a a a and a I write or I put like a little a or I put SS on the top of my buffs uh, letting me know that it is the top when I go to put it on the flange but not only that I like to separate my aluminum and stainless buff so um, that's just a little tip for you guys and how I kind of do it but so I'm gonna get those switched out real fast uh, one thing to pay attention to again for the guys that might be new to the Minzerna stuff when we are using the 439 I am going to be adding a lot more into the wheel and I will be raking and reapplying frequently one of the rule of thumbs I use is if the compound starts leaving like little black spots on the area that I just passed through uh, I will rake and reapply and keep on going what she looks like before the last pass so again that's 480 BLF and 
and as you can see it is crystal clear and then a little spots here and there I got to touch up but we're gonna go to the last step and I'll show you guys that and then we'll uh, take a look at the end and see what we got guys so we got this one all finished up there's a, a bar of our p14f and I would say it's clear enough that you could pretty much read the label in the reflection so tell me what you guys think below of course we have our sick rigs polish that really helped do the job on those so uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the other one knocked out. I'll uh, probably do that off camera, but uh, 
let me know what you guys thoughts are if you've been thinking about uh, trying Minzerna um, I'll give you a better view like I say I'm, I've been very impressed ever since I started using it and quite frankly I don't think that my work would look nearly as good if I didn't have it um, bring this up so you guys can see it I mean that is just pretty much perfect at least to my standard you guys let me know what your thoughts are but I am very happy with that this is under direct LED light which you guys know LED does not lie so there she is All right, well, I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, the main point of this video was just to help some of the guys that either have been polishing for a long time and wanted to try out the Minzerna, maybe had a little trouble, or maybe if you're brand new to polishing and uh, want to give something a go. Uh, like I said, I, this is what works for me. Other guys use other things, and I totally get that. I... Um, I uh, hope I was able to help somebody out there. If I was, drop a comment down below. If there's something else that you're struggling with, let me know if there's something I can help you. Um, you know, I'm still fairly new to this. Like I said, I'm a year in, but uh, I feel like I'm getting better every every time I do something. So um, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, like the video, that lets me know that it's worth my time to put out another one in the future. That pretty much wraps things up. Um, I am going to do the other valve cover off camera. Obviously, you saw how I did that one, so I'm going to do it the exact same way. And then I'm going to finish up the uh, the rear engine plate. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this. I mean, it was mainly there so that way a newer guy could learn how to use, uh, you know, metal polishing compounds. And if you've been doing it a long time, hopefully you learned something about Menzerna. Again, I'm brand bias for myself. I know it works for me. I know that you guys probably have stuff that works for you as well. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you like. Uh, if there was something that I missed or you didn't like something that I did in the video, by all means, you know, uh, throw me to the wolves there too. I don't mind. With that said, guys, I'm out. I'll see you guys on the next upload.